Hey, hello, everybody. Uh, this is Brett here. Welcome to Crypto Mastery. Uh, this is Tuesday and September 19th. And uh, so a couple of you are joining live. A number of people are logging in here. So I'll go ahead and just turn off the zero uh, percent movers and we can start diving into this. But uh, if you guys have any questions, feel free to ask. And uh, hopefully you can hear me okay. I'm not going to turn on video today. I'm on uh, mobile, on a Wi-Fi, and we're pushing a lot of data here as well as audio. So I want to make sure that uh, there's no lags with that. And uh, so, um, you know, just to dive in here, we've got uh, Bitcoin up 2%, Ethereum up 1%. Uh, the big news is you know, we've sort of pushed up here over the last few days and uh, we're coming up at resistance here. So selling off a bit here on the daily from this moving average. So I'll just turn off the uh, moving average ribbon here, the EMA ribbon, uh, clean this up a bit. So what we have in here is the uh, this EMA, the purple one here, that's gonna be, just to double check, this should be uh, the 100 uh, day EMA. So we've pushed right up to the 100 day EMA, right into this order block resistance. So if we open that up and we'll dive into our indicators here in a moment. But uh, we can see there's sell pressure here on the daily and this whole range. So I would expect it to probably pull back a bit uh, here. And, um, you know, we've been kind of watching to see how this is going to develop, but right up to that 100 day moving average, which has been pretty important in the past, that's held support here and uh, come up become support resistance, flipped as support back here, kind of held here and then uh, dropped back down. And so well, let me just pull up a different chart of Bitcoin here and we'll take a look at this so that um, <clears throat> we can see it from all angles. Uh, here's a little bit uh, louder, uh, zoomed out uh, and on the weekly time frame, what I was getting at there is that we've been watching for and waiting for a possible head and shoulders to form. And so let's take a look at uh, what's happening here. The little rally here was not unexpected. You know, I've been saying probably get a bounce here. And what remains to be seen is, does it push up and reject at this sort of 29,000 level? You know, um, I, you know, I think there's, if we look at it on a daily, that 28,000 looks interesting. So if we start getting up here and breaking above that, we'll really want to pay attention. But uh, until it's above 32,000, and I would invalidate kind of the head and shoulders, you know, call it 32,500 to confirm this red zone. <clears throat> this is going to be the tough area to get above. Once we're above that, uh, we certainly could uh, keep push higher. But it's it's uh, it's looking like that probably won't happen in the near term immediately. What we do have here, though, on the weekly is an ERI, an early reversal indicator, which uh, after last week's candle, which did confirm as an early reversal indicator. So now what we're watching for, and not to speed through this, I'll slow down here a bit, is we want to see uh, two things. This uh, trend strength indicator, our TSI stay green here, and then next week get above that 20 line, and that would confirm a near-term rally likely. And what I was suggesting last week is a rally up into this right shoulder where we could take some profits, make some profits and take some profits in that range. But uh, I, I would expect a fairly high probability based on this pattern that it would roll over again. And what we could see at that point, if I just extend that out is uh, maybe we rally off of this important 25K level. And if we can't, then the measured move that we've been talking about based on this head and shoulder, the break of the shoulder could take us down into this sort of 20,000 range, which is where that CME gap is. That CME gap is sort of right in here. So, <clears throat> you know, these are the scenarios. Uh, this is, should not be unexpected. And uh, we have been uh, talking about that. And so we'll kind of keep an eye on this, but jumping back over to our daily chart. Let's kind of just have a look at uh, this here. And now this, for some reason, why is this saying monthly chart? Uh, it was on a daily, but I have it saved as a monthly chart. So that's not the one I really want to be looking at. But while we're here, it is interesting on the monthly time frame that it's holding above that 25,000 500 level. Okay, so if we can hold there, that is a bullish looking candle. So as, as often we see, we have mixed signals here. By the way, this is the ERI Pro, which uh, we've added a, this green box is money flow. 
And what's interesting about that is uh, in the past, if we go back to early of 2021, this is what I did want to show you, is we had this money flow trigger that came in and that was the mark of, hey, this is now going higher. And then we broke, as we were breaking above the prior sort of high back here around 14,000 local high, it really took off and we went on to new highs. So this, this order block here, this money here, I'll turn off the order block detector so you can see what I'm talking about. This uh, our indicator, the early reversal indicator, Pro, uh, this green box, it's money flow coming into the markets. And now we can see this on strong volume on the monthly basis. And um, now we are getting a bearish ERI here, but my hope would be, and I my read at this point is either we hold here and then push higher, or we maybe do pull back to bounce off of that CME gap and then push higher. But this is, uh, this is kind of significant. This uh, green box here showing that uh, that's where money came in. And if we look at a farther zoomed out chart or with more data, we can just sort of zoom out and see how often has this happened in the past. And um, <clears throat> so for some reason, the order block detector had disappeared on this chart here. Uh, let's see, uh, we're still looking at a few things with this and it may be that uh, format of the data, it's not ready to work with. And so uh, I'll have to ask Joe about that. Uh, let's see, where, I'm on my longer term data, 2015. Okay, this is good. This is what I wanted to show you. And uh, this is on Coinbase here. There's certainly, uh, you know, there's, if you go into like the, the uh, BLC, Brave New Coin Index, all the way back, you can go even further. What I want to call your attention to though is back here, we had that money flow index on the monthly hit. That was the start of the bull run. And then it uh, triggered again here is where it continued up to that blow off top in 17, came back down, sort of had a cup on the handle here. Maybe it was a little bit late and uh, triggered again here and it's triggering again here. So uh, we want to keep an eye on this. But uh, what I would be looking for is, you know, the next sort of turn up on, on here after this monthly bearish ERI to come back down and bounce. Okay, so if we open up our other indicators here, we're getting a little bit overbought on the trend strength indicator, but that can stay at overbought levels for quite some time. So we're looking for clues. I, you know, I don't have any groundbreaking uh, information for us here today that's new uh, other than uh, what we can look at on a little bit shorter time frame on this uh, this bounce here that could be incoming. So let's let's hop over here. Uh, a couple of things. Uh, we'll look at the one hour, four hour. Now, one hour, four hour is interesting. The order block, uh, you know, it's bounced off support on these different levels. This shows we could go up to 28k, a little bit above 28k before hitting any resistance. That would indicate some, some more upside uh, on the one hour, four hour. So we'll have to watch for that. And then, of course, if we get over onto our uh, Bitcoin uh, daily chart here, kind of another way of looking at it. We're mostly green on the radar, which is good. And uh, so what do we have here? If we turn on the uh, ERI chart, I'll just use the basic ERI on this one. And, um, you know, we had this ERA back here. Uh, we're overbought on the TSI, though. I think um, this is, this is going to be a little bit tricky to get above. Probably a couple day sell off followed by that weekly follow through rally. The strongest rallies kind of happen when those both are in alignment. Take a quick look at the uh, Ichimoku here. So, uh, you know, Bitcoin's down below the cloud a little bit back in uh, uh, below the cloud, as we can see here, not to dive into that too much. Really don't need these other indicators other than what we have. There is something telling though here, stay with me, because our dynamic ATR is also turning green night right now on the daily. Okay, so that will generally mean some more follow through on the bullish side. So we see if we zoom in on that, let me zoom in a little bit further, this uh, signal here, when it turns from red to green and we have that little, uh, it's, it's hard to explain what that like, thing is. We have a, a bear <laughs> here. I guess this is supposed to be a bull. This little uh, great uh, little guy, green box uh, with little horns on it. You can't see. This is the bull is easier to see, but um, this is the beauty of these indicators. Uh, again, so this is a daily chart. We'd want to see this confirm as a green candle. And generally, these yellow candles are reversal candles. Didn't quite happen here, 
But uh, the ATR, the dynamic average true range, is a good signal that things are about to push higher. And we did have that last happen back in June, where we saw this nice push higher. The the uh, news about potentially BlackRock coming in with an ETF. So that was that signal there. So do want you to pay attention to that. You know, we have multiple different signals we can draw from. And the strongest ones are going to be when they are in confluence. So back here, looking in March of 2023, uh, we had uh, the ERI and then the dynamic ATR when green saw a nice big rally there. So there's another clue for us. That was a 50% rally. And then if we were to draw it here recently, uh, we saw a 25% rally. So, and I would also call your attention back to here. So you want to keep an eye on this dynamic average true range because this was a 50% rally if you'd sort of held it or if you'd sold it there and then bought it again on the next one, you could have really multiplied your portfolio. So we're, and we are, it does look interesting here. So let's uh, also have a look at, you know, we have the, the radar here. Oftentimes I like to see, I, I do like the four hour daily, weekly, monthly, but uh, if we want to just switch that really quickly to a three month, that would be a quarterly, a uh, quarterly ERI and uh, sorry of uh, radar. So look at that. We have so the monthly is bearish, but the three month is green. This is interesting. We haven't really looked at that in this context. So uh, the more I look at this, uh, the more bullish it does look here. So despite coming up to that hundred day EMA that we were looking at, the uh, overall market looks uh, pretty good here, especially on this weekly. With that oversold uh, TSI, that's where we could see some real fireworks here is if, uh, if that can launch us up. And if we, again, we break this up in this level above 28, sorry, above 32K, that could invalidate this head and shoulders pattern. In the short term, I'd be looking for some profit opportunities. So what we can do, uh, let's jump over to this. <clears throat> the crypto market, uh, the, uh, high, the high flyers, what the gainers and losers are. Now, by the way, if you're watching this on our YouTube channel, you can get access to these indicators at CryptoMastery.org and learn more about these proprietary indicators that have allowed us to call every market top and bottom, including to the day and to the week in July, midsummer, July 2021, and also at the market cycle tops here and at the very top. So this, uh, when these two align, the ERI and TSI, highly correlative. And then this, of course, is that dynamic average true range we looked at just a minute ago. Uh, we'll also be looking for our trend indicator to turn up and give us a bell. So we'll be looking at that next. So you can read all about that here at CryptoMastery.org. These are uh, the best signals I've used in my entire 25-year trading career, and we've designed them to be that. You can also get started with a free month first month free if you sign up for the quarterly uh, option uh, for $4.97, it, very inexpensive. Okay, so uh, let's take a look at the uh, gainers here. So we have a couple coins and they're not, um, you know, not super high market cap here, front uh, arc. And um, let's take, like, take a look at some we might see a little bit higher market cap. And storage is one of our favorites over at Moonstream. So uh, let's see what storage is up to. This is, of course, cloud-based uh, store, uh, cloud storage competing with AWS, and uh, you know they have an interesting product. It's a former Moonstream pick, and uh, it's it's up nicely today. It's had a nice little rally over the last few days. Uh, you know, look, Amazon dominates this industry, but to have a decentralized version of it uh, is uh, an interesting play. I would caution people that these are pre-revenue, but these are some long-term gems that would be worth keeping an eye on. Okay, so that's up 100% in the last couple of weeks. Look at that. So if you had been watching storage, you might see that it bounced off of this nice support zone back in here. And then we had the uh, average true range go green. We had double early reversal indicators. The signs were all here, you guys. And we had our trend strength indicator go from red to green and break above that 20 line. We had the signal line go green. I mean, when these all align, it's almost, I can't say 100%, but it is a very high correlation. It's 90% plus when they all align. So back here, we had a key and a bell. Resume the number sequence here. The, the reason I would not have gotten in here is that you want to wait for that midline, that midline to go from red to green. 
and then start the number sequence or the key in the bell are all, all over again. And often what we see is we see the key in the bell sequences go multiple times, uh, but it is giving us the take profit signal here, the bag of money here. We want to see it usually uh, take profits there, wait for another key, say, hey, another opportunity to enter might be coming, usually on a pull pullback, and then you wait for the bell. So here's a key lesson of how to use that trend indicator. Okay, again, wait for this midline to go green. Number sequence, first dollar sign is take some profits. The second one, the bag of money is take most of your profits. Do always recommend a moon bag, uh, but then wait for another buying entry again on a pullback ideally. So as of today on storage, I would imagine and expect some kind of a pullback. Also adding in our Bollinger Bands uh, to this and for some reason, it's not allowing me to put a Bollinger Band on this. I'm not sure why. Let's see. Study error. Well, <clears throat> let's. Uh, I can try to add that back again. But uh, Bollinger Bands. All right. For some reason, the Bollinger Band's not working for us. So uh, let's just clean up some of this here. And, and I'll go back in and add in the Bollinger Band, see if that does work. Because that is another one of our signals to... Uh, to get uh, over these. There's various versions of Bollinger Bands, as you know. Okay, I'm getting this error. All right, so <clears throat> we'll look at it on another chart here. Basically, I'll just hop over to this and uh, we can do Bollinger Bands on here, I'm sure. There we go. Now that is Bitcoin also hitting the upper boundary of its Bollinger Band. But uh, if we look at storage as we were before, and we'll just kind of look at it uh, on Coinbase. Uh, interesting, Coinbase has added storage. It might be why it's rallying. Uh, it's actually, no, it's been on here for a while. So at any rate, uh, we, are we looking for taking some profits up here, this local high up this way? But that storage has, could, could push a little bit higher. This is definitely one to watch. And if we zoom out and we look at sort of weekly and look at this from a prior standpoint, if it gets back to the old cycle highs, just turn off some of this here. Uh, the potential high and upside for this, I'm turning off some of these so we can see this a little bit better. You know, uh, storage had a nice, uh, nice run. If it gets up to old highs, you know, another, you know, another 20 X potential 20 X on storage. Let's think of this again. All right. So back to the old prior highs. Okay. About an eight X. I got a little bit uh, carried away there, but still, uh, Good looking chart here on the weekly basis. Let's look at our indicators. So we have an ERI on the weekly. We have our TSI a bit overbought. It can stay there, but we do have a green signal line. Let me zoom out a little bit because the other thing we see here is uh, the it's breaking above the 50 week exponential moving average. Guys, I don't know. I'm starting to like this uh, quite a bit here. I'm going to add this to our Crypto Mastery watch list, and we'll keep an eye on this. Again, storage uh, was one of our picks in the last market cycle, so uh, we want to uh, keep an eye on this. Okay, so um, you guys, look, these are signs of strength. I like to buy off of a double bottom or triple bottom. You know, we saw this here. Uh, we saw we had an ERI here. Again, this is on a weekly basis. So, uh, but look at this. Some of my uh, favorite setups, a double ERI, double bottom. Okay, both times the TSI went back above 20. So the second time breaking above the 50-day EMA, this looks pretty strong here. And uh, we want to keep an eye on that all. The ATR, the average true range, also going green on the weekly basis. So uh, you know what? Keep an eye on this. This is why, this is the methodology of how we, evaluate these and sometimes you'll catch these breakouts early you know i do like to buy into strength but um uh, how we found that <clears throat> again was on the the movers so is there any news today uh, possibly we can try and look at that here in a minute so uh but anyway that's uh, that's very uh, interesting so that on the crypto gainers list and yeah looks interesting so we'll close that don't need all of these if you want me to look at any particular coins by the way let me know uh, let's see the uh, volume market cap. Some of these other ones I'm not familiar with, so we could pull up. You know, every there's always new uh, new coins in each market market cycle, new market cycle. And uh, so, spell token. I I don't know enough about this to kind of recommend it. it. Looks like it's breaking out of a downward trending channel. 
and uh, we're pulling a lot of data on here. Let me turn off some of these uh, indicators that we don't need all at once. But uh, but here, here's here's what okay, here's what I want everyone to pay attention to. Uh, okay, especially right now, you're going to see a lot of these right now. When we start seeing the 21 day crossing above the 50 day exponential moving average. All right, let me turn off this ERI here for a minute so you guys can see what I'm talking about. Now I have two of these for some reason. Uh, okay, there. All right, if nothing else, uh, if nothing else, if you start seeing the 21 day exponential moving average crossing above the 50 and the price action is back above that as well, it's very bullish. And these are the types of patterns that no matter what you're watching, these are some of my favorite and the most high probability. Now we of course have extra uh, tools, the crypto mastery tools to really aid us in our confidence. But this spell token to me looking very strong here on this possible breakout. And so not financial advice, of course, but uh, these are some great signals. And um, if you can confirm that, I think it's a bit overbought based on the, uh, the uh, signals here. And let me see if we can turn on our trend indicator that uh, I may have accidentally just closed. Let's see if this is what I was looking for. No, there it is. Okay. Well, um, I, so I would I would be careful chasing this. Um, but if even without ours, let me turn on that ATR for a minute because that's going to give us a, a changing. So it is looking good on the ATR. And uh, let's take a look at this. So I don't know. Put spell token on your radar here. This uh, If it pulls back, I'd be wanting to see some kind of a pullback here. Because uh, I hate to chase these things, especially when they're at the top of their upper Bollinger Band. Again, this is a modified Bollinger Band. You can uh, change that to work better for crypto. If you take a standard Bollinger Band, which has two standard B, uh, uh, standard deviations, and uh, and change it to three. Okay, sorry, some news just popped up on my other screen here. So uh, spell token looking interesting. Let's see what else we have here. Do we want to add that to our crypto mastery? watch list we might as well let's add that there okay uh back to the watch list here so i'll go ahead and close that out we'll go to spell token all right interesting uh top crypto gainers anything else? let me just check the chat see i don't see anybody has any questions uh we can just go through and see some of these now this is going to be a pump or so it looked like 36 percent increase today so this is probably some kind of a pump and dump um, well, okay, look, uh, let's look at the charts and not jump to any conclusions. Again, breaking out of that downward trending channel. Okay, so I don't want to jump to conclusions here. It was that right, 36%. Uh, it's up 21% today. I must have misread that, but let's see. Okay, this look, looks good back above its 50-day exponential moving average. We had an ERI and a TSI going green we are if we do look at our trend indicator again that's going to give us a better look at the go to logarithmic mode here the uh, better look at the uh, overall uh, the strength of this new trend so if we zoom out on that we have a key and a bell we have our midline is green you know it's starting to see things all aligning and, and I, I do like that we have we're only on a two of a seven sequence so this looks bullish, you guys. Frontier. I'm not sure what they do, but show me the charts. I'll tell you the news. And uh, I'm going to add that to our watch list. So, so now you can see kind of our methodology here if we start to kind of go through these. And uh, so look at the top gainers for the day, see what's going on. Uh, now, this won't always be the case. We're, have the, we're fortunate that we're coming out of a bear market and starting to see some actual movement here. So we're finding a bunch of gems, you guys. Uh, you know, they're a little overbought on our TSI, but I, I'm, I'm, I'm okay with that because we have our dynamic ATR going green for the first time on many of these on a weekly basis since uh, back in June of 2020. Interesting. Interesting. Okay, so we want to pay attention to some of these. Uh, I'm going to, now the Bollinger Bands, again, we, we try to not chase these uh, toward the top of the Bollinger Bands. Uh, for some reason, that is not turning off for this coin, but I'm going to add it to our Crypto Mastery list. 
And, uh, you know, you guys are watching this. By the way, if you're watching the YouTube replay, be sure to hit like and subscribe because uh, we are giving you some of the best tools and tips on here that you're going to find anywhere. These indicators do give us an edge, can give you an edge. You can go to CryptoMastery.org and find out more about those our proprietary indicators and the special how to get a free month on that. Uh, just a reminder. Okay, so ARC here, um, again, also looking at this, breaking out of a downward trending trend channel. So if I were to sort of take all the diagrams off here for a minute, and I'm just pushing too much data, I think it's not going to uh, do that for me. But let's just clean this up a little bit. And all you need to look for on these I mean, obviously, our indicators are giving you uh, better, stronger clues here. Again, above the 2150-day moving average and breaking up above out of a, a multi-month since multi-year downward trending channel. Look at this, guys. So I want to see how this closes for the week because it certainly can sell off. I would expect on ARC, for example, that it would pull back down. Uh, retest and uh, bounce out of this again off the 2150 week but hear what i'm saying that we are starting to find some nice setups here okay that we haven't seen since 2021 and uh you know these pumps can be fairly rampant and rapid all right so uh let's kind of keep these on uh the radio i've got uh, can't have too many windows open here will slow us down let's look, let's take a look at a few more if you guys do have any that you want me to look at let me know and we can pull those up teller Beluzel. i just let me let's search for some of these that we know are good projects if we see any beta finance possibly uh see a lot of these new lower market cap coins coming up like bakery token uh, ample fourth. Haven't looked at that in a while. A tour. So uh, it's not clear what's uh, what's pushing these, uh, or what sector that these are in. But uh, looks like some some uh, DeFi, trade fi and uh, but I'm not recognizing many of these. But now we're just in the five percent. So that's not uh, tremendous in and of itself. We looked at uh, front arc TRB. I guess we can look at TRB here. And see what this is, Trellor. Sounds like Trezor, but it's something different, obviously. And uh, let let's let it let the charts tell a story. But again, we have we have the uh, dynamic average true range going bullish. Now I know I've been on weekly charts for these. Let's jump back to a daily. See what uh, these are showing us. Okay, so on the daily chart, looks very interesting. Bouncing off the twenty-one day exponential moving average. I would suggest this goes goes higher it's a little bit mis mixed signals here though we have that eri we have our tsi bearish okay so this would sort of invalidate it i would i would might go a like position on this because it's in a nice new uptrend but uh wait for our eri and tsi to go green ideally all right why don't we do this here let's go back i know we have our own uh, charts uh in our own watch list by the way so if you guys want this the price gainers, by the way, if you want to monitor that, you can find this in trading view. Oops, disregard that. And what I can do is put this into the chat for you guys that are here live. But if you're not, you can always Google that and find this page. Sometimes we use the uh, the screener, which we can also look at here in a minute. But for first, I want to, uh, yeah, storage looking really good there. I want to go back to our uh, crypto mastery uh, list of coins. And so some of the ones we've been watching for some time now, uh, we looked at Bitcoin, uh, Ethereum worth looking at, of course. And so what are we seeing here? We've, we've kind of got, we're all green on the radar, which uh, again, I, I switched out the monthly for the three month, but that's encouraging. We got an ERI. Uh, what we want to see here on the weekly though, with, uh, with ETH is this start turning green. If we start turning green and break that 20 line on the weekly chart. I think ETH is, uh, is going to have a nice, a nice rally here. Okay, so based on these signals, trust, you have to trust the signals. So starting to kind of turn up about it's in a bit of a downtrend on the daily. But uh, if it can get back above here, like above 1700, I'm going to put an alert right there because that's a significant level and uh, would indicate that uh, we are likely going higher. So I'm going to put a buy question mark alert for us. 
So, and it's certainly when the, uh, the ATR starts to go green as well. All right, let's take a look at compound. Uh, not much going on with here. All red on the radar. I, you know, I've, at one point this was starting to look good. I don't really like this uh, up as a tier one. So comp, I'm going to move kind of down the list here. It's not a micro cap, obviously. So we're just going to push it way, way down into this lower range. So, um, but let's take a look at Solana. Solana was looking interesting here. I'm uh, trying to push up. Let's look at it on the weekly basis. And uh, having an ERI on the weekly time frame. So I would say keep an eye on Solana if we start to break above that and start seeing these signs above the 20, the 50 day EMA. The ERI is green on the weekly basis. Let's see if it closes on Sunday, the closing weekly candle. And if we start to go green here on the TSI, I'd say that Solana is looking ready to go again. Uh, Fox tokens, one we've looked at here last week, uh, not looking as good here on the weekly time frame. Little bit of a push higher, not looking terribly strong. Although, although I take that back because we have the ATR is still red, but we have an ERI TSI. Okay, so Shapeshift, Fox token, looking interesting here. And uh, is one to watch because they've got some cool things they're doing. So with that, the short-term radar is bullish. I, here's the thing. The bottom line is I would like to see this. Let me turn off the ATR here because it will change the candle colors. This is green. I want to see it close back above the 21 and 50 day moving average. We talk about that looks what it, it's basically, it's basically like the ice over the lake. And there's two levels of ice. There's the 21 day, the thin ice and the thick ice. And when they're together and you're below it, it's not good. You've got to break above that ice, get up above and stand on the ice to be able to go higher. So we saw that back over here, shot right up, came back down, found support on the thicker ice, you know, the 50 day EMA. And uh, but once you're down below those, you have to think about it. it's harder to get back above them. Just a little analogy. So that uh, some of you uh, might be a benefit from. So just keep that in mind. Um, why does it work? How does it work? We don't need to go into all that. Uh, some of it's self-fulfilling, but uh, at any rate, that's the, that's the case there. I would not be looking at this, even though we have an ERI ESI green, I would prefer to see it break above and close above that uh, e the, the ice there. And then with those signals aligned and, and the signal line turning green, which it looks like it wants to, then that would be a good en entry, ideal entry for that. So keep an eye on Fox. Okay, Rune. Some people were talking about Rune earlier today and our M3 Active Trader Group. So uh, Rune here on a daily basis, a bit overbought here. I'd be a little bit care careful. We have a bearish ERI. And looks like it's struggling a bit at this prior resistance level. So, you know, I think uh, I won't name names, but I would be cautious here buying Rune. Wait for a pullback would be ideal. Like back here, bullish ERI, TSI green, signal green. And not sure why this trend indicator isn't uh, firing up here, but that would be the kind of rules of engagement there. Now, any break and close above this level would be meaningful. So let's put an alert on Rune. Crossing above two dollars, let's just make the uh, make it a round number. And this is what I like to do. I like to give a label here. You know, I'll do exclamations and question marks if it's sort of a unsure to go reevaluate. Sometimes, if it's clear to me that uh, a break above means all the other signals align, I'll put by exclamation exclamation. So, so that when I see my alerts fire, that I know exactly what to, uh, what to do. All right, some of the micro caps here, air, uh, not looking great on the daily, uh, weekly basis, uh, neither also not looking great. Uh, INJ here, starting to look good. Here we have, again, above, broke above the ice, kind of came up here. It's a good illustration of the analogy, right? So, uh, you know, fell down below the ice. It was drowning for a while, drowning, try to get above the ice, couldn't try to get up above the ice. Uh, the thick broke above the thin ice was rejected at the thick ice, came back down and drowned again, and then got back above that thicker ice, that 50 day EMA bounced up and is holding above on the daily basis. So, uh, INJ looking pretty good there. We want to see that hold though. That could certainly still sell off end of day. We can see these these topping tails appear. So we want to be careful uh, of uh, not using intraday data. This could sell off and get back below the ice as it were. Okay. So you guys are tired of hearing about ice. I get it. But I uh, just want you to understand and be able to sort of visualize how this is how this 
this all generally works. Uh, so Polygon Matic still kind of, you know, hitting some resistance there, a weekly basis. Uh, we have an ERI in the weekly, kind of a small ERI bullish engulfing, though. You know, if you did start seeing the uh, weekly TSI start to go green, might see a bit of a bounce. But Matic has had some trouble, especially since moving over to the Solana blockchain. Uh, Ripple here, uh, you know, uh, all green on the radar, but uh, below the ice, overbought on the trend strength indicator. Not really going to look at that much more. Filecoin is uh, is another one, like storage, which is competing for that uh, online or that cloud-based storage. It's green on the radar, a bit overbought on the ERI TSI, but uh, mostly it's, uh, it's still, you know, it's above the 21 day. I would say this, I would put an alert here above, again, that thicker ice at 3.6, just use that round number, and I would say buy, okay, let's see, buy, there. So that's uh, something that would be interesting for me. I, you know, I am seeing some kind of strength coming in. How long it lasts, it's hard to say. Quick swap, uh, not looking terribly good. We've got XLM lumens, you know, kind of maybe standing up. We've got an ERI. If we see the TSI start to go above, where? Where would you put your alert on this? Okay, right above, right above in here. Point of 0.125. It's kind of an art and a science so that uh, we want to know when these things are starting to break up higher to give us a clue. Hey, maybe it's time to jump on these and buy into strength. Okay. All right. Immutable X here. Um, it looks somewhat interesting. Let's take a look at a weekly basis to zoom out a bit. Uh, still, still not looking strong enough. No ERI there. Uh, I would say we'll keep it on our radar here, as it were. BNB. Uh, hitting, uh, kind of having some trouble here below the ice as well. Let's see on a weekly basis. There was uh, some rumor that they were, Binance was selling their Bitcoin to prop up BNB and try to keep it above 200. But this could easily still roll over and drop off. I would avoid uh, Binance coin until further notice and uh, and wait for some stronger signals and back above these, uh, you know, the ice and the, the various things. If it's all red on the radar, though, you want to stay away from these. Uh, we've got uh, some of these are older coins here that people have wanted to look look at let's see do you guys have any that you want me to pull up let's see how many people we've got 10 people here now uh, is your chance if not today if not now then forever hold your peace as they say but uh, happy to pull up some you guys want to look at and these are those ones we found on that uh, the top crypto gainers um, let's see a couple things too uh, sometimes we look at these uh, AI coins, mm, I've got a list of AI coins here. We could just run through. We've got Ajax trying to push up higher, still under the ice, kind of a nondescript looking chart. I might pull up a weekly just briefly. All right, so um, weekly looks interesting on the, uh, the trend strength indicator, sorry, the ERI on the weekly basis. So here's what you can also do. And one of the reasons we love these indicators, just right click on the indicator itself and add an alert on there so if you want to say i want to see crossing up above 20 that is our that is our signal uh that it's uh we, we want to get in that's our confirming signal here and so uh with that in mind uh, we do have a trading checklist a trade success checklist i think the link has is uh we've re just moved to a different domain name so we'll have to get that working again uh, Myrene, if you're listening, uh, you could, if we could get that link working on CryptoMastery.org over to uh, the uh, trade success checklist for people that are new here. Uh, let's do that. And we'll have to, uh, it's, it should be listed in the, if you're watching the YouTube channel, somewhere on the page there. So, uh, okay, Ajax here, these are weekly basis. Uh, I'm going to just run through some on the daily. AI coins have had a big run this year, uh, probably overextended a bit a bit of mania just keep, keep in mind I don't have earnings yet it's very early the graph is one that was hyped up uh, last cycle but again they just don't have a revenue model i would be sort of cautious uh, on these and um some of these uh surprised to see ali coin down six but there's an example of uh, these moving averages why you know, how they are often very respected. So, you know, AI, AI coins, one that we like. 
artificial liquid intelligence and uh, got above its 50 day moving average yesterday, but then sold off and is back below with a big bearish engulfing candle. So you want to be a little bit careful with these. And uh, so let's take a look at this, this the rest of the list here. Okay, we've got Doc and uh, Render. A lot of these, again, having trouble with that 50-day EMA. Or the ones that are above it are going to be stronger, but this bearish early reversal indicator, hence the name, early reversal. So we want to be careful. It's overbought on the TSI. So this thing looks like it's could be coming down. And so this is a kind of a, it's this is a tough one to read because you have, what do you have here? We have a bearish engulfing candle and immediately followed by the bearish early reversal indicator. But on the positive side, it's a bullish candle sitting right on top of that thick ice on that 50 day EMA. So kind of want to give that a little bit more time to see if it can bounce up higher or if it's going to break back below. If it starts breaking back and closing below the 50-day EMA, you want to be taking stop losses on any of these that uh, are doing that or partial exits so you can dollar cost average uh, back into the coin potentially later, which is a good strategy. So I'm just running through these fairly quickly here. Again, if you guys have any questions, I do see a chat uh, Alex would like to see looks. Yeah, we can do that, Alex. No problem. And uh, so let's see. Mana, these are just all looking pretty weak. They're rejecting at that 21 day moving average. So you want to stay away from those, not be buying anything that doesn't, isn't at least above its 21 day EMA. And that's the, kind of one of my rules. Unless it's bouncing off of a strong previous support level and our indicators go green. That's the caveat. That's the exception to the rule. So AI tokens, not looking super strong, but the uh, worth keep an eye on. I just, it's, it's September. September's traditionally been a bad month for crypto. Uh, in, in all fairness, I uh, was suggesting, I think it could be an up month, but we're just not seeing that here in, in the markets yet. So, hey, what we have, we have to give what the markets give us. New information equals new decision. So, Keep that in mind and that we just uh, we just don't know. And what we can do, we're looking to follow in the footsteps of elephants. So when we see the elephants making moves, we want to jump right behind them and uh, and follow up with what they're doing. All right, let's take a look at looks rare. And that's uh, one of our, our Moonstream picks. And a uh, little, little, little tricky to, to get. It looks like it's on KuCoin. And uh, let's see. Oh, a Bybit, OKX, Polynex. Not super easy for uh, U.S. people to buy, but uh, at any rate. Um, okay, Alex. Well, let's take a look at looks here. I'll open that up for everybody. And it's a bit overbought on our TSI. There's not much to see here, Alex. It's kind of nondescript. Okay, let's uh, zoom out. You know, I like that it's... It's above its 21 and 50 day moving average. But, you know, this is a, a spinning top here. It's a reversal sign. It's a sign of indecision, otherwise called a doji. But uh, this to me, it looks like it's not quite strong enough. Now, yesterday we had a rocket. Well, here's the thing. It wasn't really a rocket. Uh, the rocket indicator looks like this, but has to close near the top of the day. So this is a tough one. I would have still imagined it gone, it went higher because of this long wick, the rocket on the launch pad, which is a 21 day EMA. But because of this upward topping tail, that's a bit suspect. And this candle before it was also a doji spinning top. So indicating bearish indecision. So, you know, it's good that we're above the 50, but it's not something you want to just suddenly dive in and add more. Now, if we went up and sort of closed toward the end of this by the end of the day, that would be a strong signal. One of my other uh, alpha signals, though, that you guys haven't seen heard me talk about, though, in a while, is the midpoint of the vector candle. See, we see it right up to that midpoint of that vector candle, touched it and reversed. So that is bearish, uh, slightly bearish in my mind. You know, vector candles are these big moves up or down. Typically, they'll retrace to the midpoint. So if we go to the middle of this one here, that one's already retraced. See this big upward candle here. If we guesstimate that midpoint, 
right about there. Well, guess what? Price came right back to it. So you want to look for these retests of the vector candles. They act as magnets. And, uh, you know, this has been just something we've been doing for 20 years. And um, but once they hit, it's uh, it kind of can become a resistance or support area. So with looks rare, I, you know, I wouldn't be betting or buying more necessarily. Let's look at a weekly time frame. Uh, you know, we don't have we don't have anything we're looking for on the weekly. We don't, don't have an ERI. TSI is just sort of meandering and the volume is very low. You definitely want to watch volume. So Alex, I wouldn't be buying more here if you're in it. Uh, I wouldn't necessarily be selling, but I would be thinking about this as a, if it starts kind of coming down and closes below the 50 day EMA, if you had a position, I, normally, again, educational purposes, I would sell half with the intent of buying it back lower to lower your overall cost basis, dollar cost averaging. Okay, so, you know, um, that's the name of the game and preservation of capital as well. So if you just, you know, I would have, have that in mind uh, and, you know, always good to sort of sell half. So you're not, uh, I should rephrase that, not always, but oftentimes good to sell half because what happens as traders, if we're in a position and it starts going against us, we're looking at the loss and our brain doesn't want to take a big loss. So we sit there like a deer in headlights as it goes down and down and down. And then we capitulate and sell. I can't take any more pain. And then it goes higher. How many times has that had, happened to you guys? So at these key inflection points, to be honest, if you were in looks rare, let's say you bought it down here and it came up and touched this midpoint, which is also we can see was a resistance level here as well. Uh, that would have been a good time to take half your profits. And so you'd be waiting to uh, to go back in. Here's what's interesting, though. We have a Bollinger Band that's just coming around and tightening up really nicely. So I would keep an eye on it, Alex, but I'd wait for it to come above this 60 cent level, which has been resistance here. If it can start closing above that, then I, that's bullish. But typically on these Bollinger Bands, the pin they pinch for lack of a better term around the midpoint so this thing probably goes sideways for a few days and then makes a move uh it, you know generally to the direction that it's in but not always right so uh markets will dictate but i would say uh that that is the one thing that looks most interesting to me it's above the 50-day ema bollinger bands are tightening so it could zigzag sideways for a few days and then pop uh and um so you know, that's uh, not to give you conflicting advice here, but I would have a, like a tight stop loss below with a 21 day. Uh, we have seen it you know, get stopped out last couple of times, but just, you know, better to be stopped out, reevaluate and reenter. And for like half the position, hold the other half just for if you like this long term. But this looks like it's going to it's getting ready for a move. Let's zoom out. All these coins have personalities. And so. Uh, so here's the difference. Here's a new lesson for you guys. So here we saw the Bollinger Bands tightening, but it was in an obvious downtrend. And so it wasn't a symmetrical tightening. The you know, These can be beautiful explosive moves here when they pinch over like that uh, and it's symmetrical, right? So let's go back in time and see if we can find any of those. Yeah, so here's one. Uh, here's two examples of that where it was sort of more symmetrical. It was going sideways, sideways. Bollinger Bands tightened, tightened. It pushed up to the upper Bollinger Band, came back down. Again, this is where ideally why you're, where you're taking profits, touching or above the upper Bollinger Band, came down in here, but started inching up slowly. So you would have stayed in this, you know, maybe taken some profits here, but that was a nice upward trending move there after those Bollinger Bands tightened. And that, of course, is looking at sort of low volatility. And uh, that's when that's when the buyers and sellers are at an indecision point. And uh, if the sellers are exhausted, then the buyers move and win the day. All right. Anything else? Uh, anyone else, you guys? Well, I think it's been a, a good class here. We are got a little bit of a late start, so I'm happy to stick around a little bit longer. We can look at some more crypto gainers. And let's just see, though, are there anything we want to look at? We could look at some DeFi coins, see what that pulls up. And uh, let's see the change. I'll just sort it by. I'm not sure if I can click on this and have it sort. Yeah. So the DeFi losers, we don't really want. 
Okay, there's spell token that we talked about, uh, bakery token. So let's take a look at spell token one more time and then look at uh, bakery token. <laughs> All these food related tokens. Uh, yeah, so let's see spell token on the daily. I mean, it does look kind of interesting, but I would be, I would not chase that. Uh, let's look at uh, the other one there. What did we say that was? Bakery token. This will be a new one. It's good to familiarize yourself because you never know what the next big uh, pump or you know popular tokens are. But usually the newer low cap ones, low market cap, low volume, they're the ones that get manipulated and uh, all the KuCoiners get out there hammering on margin. But I will say on bakery token here, that it is above, it's crossing above. It's 21 day, 50 day EMA. Now it's currently above the upper Bollinger Band. So it's not a buy, but when it pulls back down in, those are those ideal setups that we like to see and also layer in the average true range. So it's, uh, so, so here's the thing. If you really like this, you did your research, you like bakery token, you could do a little bit of a position just don't go all in. My best advice is don't say, all right, I've got 5,000 in my account. I'm going all in. Don't want to do that. Maybe put a 20% of that in. And then if it pulls back, you can buy it closer to that midline and add a little bit more. But uh, if you're going all in and all out, that's really a sign of an amateur. And most people blow out doing that at some point. And it's uh, no fun to have to start over again. All right. I think I see another comment or two. Let's see, Alex says, that's confirmed what I was thinking. Thanks, yep, good job, Alex. Seapool also seems to be coming back from the dead. We can look at Seapool here. Let's see, and all right, we'll put Looks Rare away. Let me, let me add Looks Rare to our watch list though so we can look at it again next week. It is, uh, it's on our active trader list. Let me put it in our crypto mastery list. Okay, there you go. And then uh, what did we say, Seapool? Okay, so Seapool, a DeFi, uh, it's on DeFi Llama. Let's see, it's hard to find Seapool though. The, um, yeah, Alex, where are you trading that? You can do, find it on Uniswap, but uh, PancakeSwap, Uniswap. Uh, KuCoin might be the simplest to look at. Gate.io also, okay. Sorry, I had it scrolled down a bit. Uh, Seapool, so, you know, it's um, came up, look at this, again, upper Bollinger Band. When these things touch or get above the third standard deviation Bollinger Band, invariably, they will come back down or they'll go sideways. So here's the thing with this, though, is it is tr looking to close above its 50-day EMA. So I think that this is good. If it does come down, a good buy spot would be on the 21-day EMA especially if we start seeing signs that it's looking good like a bullish ERI. Now we had the bullish ERI TSI back here. Had you been watching it, you know, you may have gone in a little bit and then waited till it got above the 21 day and then keep adding to the position. That would have been a reasonable strategy here. Let's take a look at the weekly. Now the weekly does look pretty interesting on Seapool. So how, how do we combine these? Well, if it looks bullish on the weekly, but bearish on the daily, then you wait for a couple day pullback and then you, then you get in. But we also see this uh, Bollinger Band tightening. We have an ERI, we have a TSI going green. So what I would suggest is I might even set an alert right here at alert on the weekly uh, TSI, okay? So that when it crosses above 30, instead of 20, but why? Because it's already above 20. It's just, you know, you can, it, you want to be like Wayne Gretzky. Where is the puck going to be? And when that happens, set an alert. Okay, so if Seapool comes up here, it closes above 20 on the weekly time frame. Uh, I think that uh, this is going to have, you know, could have a push higher, how high? Well, you, you can always, again, what would Wayne Gretzky see? Uh, and uh, so I could go up to the upper Bollinger Band. That, that's eighty percent. All right, hold the phone, everyone. I did not expect to see that. It's, uh, so even just up to the upper Bollinger Band, let's say that it's even below that. But that's a possible sixty percent trade on that over the next few weeks. Okay, very interesting. 
uh, very interesting. So let's just do let's do this. If you were at a little longer time frame, the problem is though. Here's the thing: when in doubt, zoom out. So we had uh, a kind of a fake out here. E, we had an ERI. We had a bullish engulfing candle. This is pretty low volume, and it came up, and it just barely closed above twenty, and then it came back down again. So that uh, is suspect on these. <clears throat> so I would say keep an eye on this one, but I, because of that and these recent fake outs, you know, and this, and it seems to keep getting rejected on the thin ice, the 21 day EMA here and here and here, that, that this is when you really want to wait for it to get back above that 21 day EMA, I would say, unless you took a small position there, but, but I'd be very careful, you know, preservation capitals is so important. Don't take risky bets to try to catch the bottom. Okay. It's better to buy into strength, catch that middle 80%. Uh, let's see, your grandfathered in KuCoin, uh, Alex. I'm not sure about that. They are asked, they're requiring KYC for everybody. So, uh, MEXC is the, is the next one that's not taking KYC yet, but it's only a matter of time. Well, all right, everybody. I don't know what else to show you here. Uh, we, uh, of course, in our M3 Active Trader class, we'll look at the macro markets, the, the DXY, what's going on there. We have a whole different set of charts. If you'd like to find out more about that, you can go to moonstream.io and find out about Moonstream, the best and fastest growing online crypto community that helps people become more successful investors and traders. We have a variety of different services here, our newsletter our M3 Active Trader class, our Retire Rich Inner Circle, which are emerging markets, longer term plays. Uh, we do offer coaching and mentoring, a newsletter here that I mentioned, upcoming Future of Crypto Summit. That's uh, looking really good, by the way. Let me just show this to you guys. You can now register, by the way. Let's see. Uh, all right, we have to change that link. It is just futureofcryptosummit.com. And uh, go, so go ahead and register for that. That's uh, We've recorded 28 excellent interviews and uh, just put in your name, email, and your phone number so we can remind you when these will be put out. This is free, but you'll have uh, one day, you'll have to watch it on the same day of the summit. Uh, we do have the option to buy recordings for a nominal $97. But here are some of the experts. We've got Max Wright from a conservative uh, contrarian dude rather and success council great interview with max uh, dirk de bruin as well the art of buying the dip We've got ricardo martinez talking about wallets uh serendipitously i ran into and met this guy in a in an elevator uh, in san diego heard him talking about crypto and then we realized he'd be a great interview uh, we have uh, of course michael hearn from uh decentral uh what's it called decentralized um I'm sorry, uncensored crypto. <laughs> he had a virtual crypto summit. Michael Hearn, a great interview there on the hidden agenda behind CBDCs. Uh, we have Katie, uh, Katie the Russian here, how to set up dual citizenship. Uh, that's a great interview. Uh, Matt Hill, running your own Bitcoin node. Uh, Kevin Costello, the guy that got Mike, my business partner, into crypto so long ago, building more freedom through Bitcoin. And then a few more. We've got Justin Donald, protecting your wealth and family from an economic meltdown. Uh, just jumping ahead. Well, I'll get to Mark Yusko here in a minute. But uh, Justin Newton did a great interview with him. I talked to him about preparing for crypto regulation, how that will change things. Uh, Mark Yusko, uh, this is an excellent interview. Mike did. Uh, Mark is a great guy. You've seen him all over uh, the Internet. Uh, he's co-founder of Morgan Creek Capital, partners with Anthony Pompliano. We're hoping to get Pomp on as an interview as well for a January re-release, but uh, he was too busy for this one on short notice. Uh, Juan Villaverde works with uh, Max Wright. Uh, had a good chance to meet Juan at the Bitcoin conference. He's uh, I did this interview with him. Uh, super nice guy. Works he's uh, works in research at Weiss Research Market Cycles. Uh, really interesting stuff. He talks about you know the the cycle timing. He doesn't really watch price but he looks very closely at cycles all the way down to the day. So you definitely want to catch that interview. Uh, Scott Phillips, a uh, buddy of mine, a reverent trader, we should probably have an R rating on it because uh, there's some language in there, uh, but he uh, he tells it like it is. Talks about trading bots, good and bad. Definitely want to catch that one. Scott's a funny guy. Uh, Coach K, Joel, uh, this guy, he's I've known him for several years now. He's one of the best TA traders that I've met, and he is um, – 
doing some incredible things. He's over in Thailand uh, talking about how to predict market direction changes before they happen. Uh, he, he's got an uncanny ability uh, to do that and um, uh, learned some good things along the way from Joel. Terrible picture of him. I've never seen him in a coat and a jacket and tie. He's very relaxed, uh, but he's, uh, he's a good character. Uh, Lark Davis uh, out of uh, New Zealand. So uh, great interview with Lark. He's got one of the largest followings on YouTube and on the internet. Had some really insightful things to say about how to build wealth in the next bull run. And this is an interview Mike did buying and selling with Bitcoin. His name's High Neck Gina. And uh, kind of how to, you know, how this people are using crypto every and everyday life. Of course, Mike Newton, my business partner, wallet hacking. I mean, really important, you know, uh, things like that people aren't talking about. Uh, incidentally, on that note, there's a popular YouTube day trader uh, goes by the name of Jason Casper. It just publicly came out and admitted that he just had 700,000 stolen from his wallet, from his Exodus wallet, because he was being careless and not updating his keys. So you definitely want to catch this session here. Uh, you don't want to have that happen. Uh, this guy, Tim, uh, Mike interviewed him of uh, the ex explosion in crypto gaming. Definitely want to know about that. That's the, the, the mass adoption is what will ultimately lead the biggest rallies in crypto. And that's coming from these user adoption uh, areas like gaming. And uh, so that's going to be a real huge catalyst. Eric Wade, I did an interview with Eric here, leaving a legacy through intelligent crypto investing. This is really uh, important to know how to do that and really how to pass along things like your keys and how to really prepare for that. Uh, we're almost done, guys, but you can see this is really going to be a great uh, summit. Mark Oldman talked about pump and, pump and dumps, how to spot a rug pull project. Uh, of course, here's myself. Did a, in, Mike interviewed me protecting your crypto trades from catastrophic losses. Uh, again, you can find out more about all this and register at futureofcryptosummit.com. And uh, a friend of mine, Jason BTO, some of you may have heard us uh, sending out an email about Jason here this week, talks about passive income strategies for generating, generating hands-free profits. Uh, Jason's been in crypto for a decade and has been uh, uh, doing very well, very, very well. He just sold his three of his Rolls Royces, put it back into the market. Smart, smart to do that. Uh, let's see, Bitcoin Lightning Network, uh, Web3 Masterclass. We've got uh, DeFi here, just skimming these. Euro, Yuri Katato. We had this funny title for a topic saying, explaining blockchain to grandma. Uh, didn't know if we'd have anybody to do that interview. He actually wrote a book basically saying blockchain for grandma. And so perfect, uh, very smart guy. Mark Theobolda from BitPay, VP of Marketing for BitPay, uh, friends of ours. And uh, this was perhaps one of the best interviews here, not last but not least, with Dr. Demelza Hayes from Cointelegraph. She's the uh, head of research there, chief economist, PhD. And she has figured out, you guys want to hear this, she's figured out and outlines on this interview uh, how to set up your IRA, your Roth IRA, in a Kraken account so that you can trade tax-free and not pay those huge uh, sort of fees that you'll find on iTrust. I do like iTrust, but it's not an active trader platform. Uh, you'll have you'll lose on the bid ask spread, and uh, so it'll cost you fifty dollars or so to get into and out of positions. Whereas if you're able to set it up on Kraken, super high liquidity, low trading costs, and the tax free until fifty nine and a half. Uh, she's offered to help uh, people with that and gives her personal contact information. This is a no sales event. No, nothing will be sold here. Uh, however, um, some of you who upgrade to the VIP uh, opportunity, there's each of these, many of the speakers have free gifts that they'll offer you guys for that, for the recordings. Uh, and that just, that, that's $97. That just goes to pay for our incredible team here that put this together. And the video editors, uh, we paid out of pocket to upfront to, to work with the best virtual summit company in the space. So there you have it. Um, anyway, so uh, sorry for the long commercial there, but some of you want to know more. And of course, if you'd like to know more about Moonstream.io, our M3 class tomorrow, where we will go through the markets at a higher level, includes the indicators, get access to me daily with daily updates in a private signal chat room and uh, trade alerts and um, the value there. People can attest to, many people have been in this for quite some time and uh, some of the bonuses. So you can read about that at moonstream.io slash M3 for active trader. Again, it includes these crypto mastery indicators and that's a little higher level service for those of you who would like 
to have help with more active trading and includes all of these things. So you can get started as low as $3.99 today. There is a better deal for paying up front, but not here to uh, uh, arm wrestle anybody, just give you the options of what we offer here. And uh, back to the DeFi coins, uh, we did look through these here. And I, I don't know, I don't think it's worthwhile going through the rest of these if they're up just five and 6%. And I don't know, TrueFi for some reason jumps out at me. Let's see what TrueFi is doing. And then we'll wrap things up here if there are no more questions or other coins you guys wanna look at. All right, on the weekly basis, TrueFi, I'm not familiar with it, but looky there we have a double ERI. Now here's a more advanced setup and I'm glad my Spidey Sense said we should look at this. Okay, in the trade success checklist, which some of you have, not, all, not enough of you are using, the advanced setup is, uh, is this. Let me just expand this so you guys can see. Uh, why didn't that work here? Full screen mode. Okay, so watch this. We have the ERI. We have the trend strength indicator coming up above 20. Generally, that's enough for us. We're on a weekly time frame. But the nuance here is when you start to see a double ERI, now one can be lower than the other up top, but on the ERI oscillator, uh, it's a little hard to see. Uh, and I'll, I'm going to need to jump out of here to put my trend line tool on this. Okay. Do you see this where the bottom was higher? It's a higher low on the ERI oscillator than the first one. So what I've found is that that is a sign of strength. Okay. So it's, it, this is a small, it's a small nuance, but on the bounce the first time it was right around zero. The second bounce was right under 3% and that 3% is originally how I discovered and we built the ERI indicator, the early reversal indicator. And that's one of the stronger signals when it bounces from below 3%. But here we have a double ERI, it's a divergence almost. You see, we have a, a lower low on the price, but a slightly higher low on that ERI oscillator. When you see that, that's a strong signal. So. Uh, I'm not making a trade call on TradeFi, but let's take a look at this, what this thing looks like. Bollinger Bands are tightening. You know, it's below the 21 day EMA. I'm going to turn off the Bollinger Bands just to clean this thing up a bit. But, uh, and we could turn on the EMA ribbons, which we haven't really been using here today. You know, um, doesn't really tell us much. So uh, I'm a fan of simplicity and not having too much on the chart. But uh, TradeFi, Let's see, it's kind of, kind of hard to tell here. If it were to go from here to the old highs, uh, 15X potential. So the question becomes, is this the bottom? Is this kind of a good place for getting into something like this uh, uh, here? We had a very, like a support zone down here. So it's it's somewhat reasonable, but you know, these markets are so risky. They still could roll over. And I, I just, I'm, I'm very leery, especially when it's rejected at the 21 day moving average and 50 day moving averages before. So again, with setups like this for as active traders, you can take those, just make sure you're taking profits into obvious resistance levels. And then later when it's above these areas, those are your longer term positions. Uh, when the market starts to recover. So that's my uh, lesson for the day. Good place to stop there. And so I don't see any more questions here. Uh, if you want to join us for our, our M3 Active Trader class tomorrow, you can go over to moonstream.io slash M3, where we unpack the overall broader markets, the DXY, the total market cap. Uh, and we dive into this a little bit deeper. So look forward to seeing some of you there tomorrow. Uh, otherwise, uh, if you're watching the YouTube channel, again, make sure to hit that like for us if you like the content and subscribe. If you're in our Crypto Mastery group, then uh, we appreciate you guys and everyone who's here from our various programs. So at any rate, I'm um, signing off here. Uh, sorry, the camera wasn't working friendly today, but I did get a new headset. So hopefully it sounds uh, good here today since I'm on the road. Okay. See you, everybody. Bye, Alex. Bye, everyone else. Bye.